Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing none other than Hogwarts Keeper of Keys and Grounds, Rubius Hagrid. More specifically, we're going to be honing in on one peculiar aspect of Hagrid's character, his wand, or lack thereof. If you had never noticed before, which I'm quite certain is impossible, Hagrid doesn't have the traditional wand that one might expect a witch or wizard to have. It's not a banana, and it's not a toothbrush, but it isn't far off, it's an umbrella. Ordinarily, umbrellas possess one very simple function, stop rain from falling on your head. However, Hagrid seems to be able to do just a few more things with his umbrella, and what I want to look at today is A. Why Hagrid has an umbrella wand, and B. How his umbrella wand works. First things first, why? It all starts with Hagrid's schoolboy days. Hagrid began attending Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in the year 1940, and was sorted into Gryffindor House, starting just two years after Voldemort himself. He was a promising young wizard, but did have a habit of getting into trouble, trouble which almost always stemmed or pertained to magical creatures in some way. It just so happened that Hagrid attended the school during a bit of a crazy period, for you see, Salazar Slytherin's basilisk had been released and was petrifying students. How students were being petrified was a complete mystery, but a witch hunt, or wizard hunt, eventually ensued in order to find the culprit. Unfortunately for Hagrid, due to his affinity for magical creatures, he was effectively framed for the crimes and barred from Hogwarts. He was expelled from the school, no longer allowed to practice magic, and his wand was snapped. The only good thing going for Hagrid was that Dumbledore stuck up for him, and got him a position as the school's gamekeeper. But did Hagrid let all of that stop him? Certainly not, and this is why he ended up with the magical umbrella that allowed him to perform the same magic that he always did, at least nearly the same magic. With that established, now let's get into the how. In essence, Hagrid's umbrella was constructed using pieces of his broken wand. They were concealed inside as to not draw any attention, since Hagrid was barred from magic, but the umbrella seems to go by relatively unnoticed. One thing you might be wondering, however, is how Hagrid's umbrella was at all effective. Historically, when a wand is broken, it effectively becomes unreliable and useless. So what made Hagrid's umbrella any different? Think of, say, Ron Weasley's broken wand, for instance. Here's the thing about Hagrid's wand. It may be constructed out of lots of little pieces of wand, but he did a better job at mending it than most others. Harry Potter tried to jury-rig his wand, and Ron's wand was spellotaped together. Hagrid's wand was built into the handle of his umbrella and supported with a splint, so it stands to reason that the good craftsmanship may contribute to the wand's capabilities. The last thing to consider is that wands are quasi-sentient, and that the relationships that wands form with wizards are strong. It could just be that Hagrid's wand had a particular affinity for the happy-go-lucky giant, which is why it ended up working better than it perhaps should have. Did you guys ever think about this? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, remember, if you want to know what a man's like, take a good look at how he treats his inferiors, not his equals.